above sea level. The table ends are ahead of us. We sort of we, we are progressively going down. Uh, we're going to cruise across the tablelands area for a bit, and the dramatic descent's a little bit further along yet. Also, though. deposit back there at Ornsland. Then they can start mining the copper, railing it back to Chiligo, processing the smelters and hopefully save this entire operation. So that's all they wanted to do. They got to Ornsley in 1909 and they were done. Chiligo mining comes out, yep, done, excellent, start mining, brilliant. The government then got in touch with them and said, hey guys, any chance you could continue constructing the line from Ironsley across to Georgetown and then from Georgetown across to Croydon and then we can join up with the Norm to Croydon line. And the Chile Gate Mining Company said, no way, we do not have the money to do that. And the government said, that's okay, we'll pay for the lot. We just want you to supply the, uh, the manpower. And that was fine. The Chile Gate said, yep, yeah, no worries at all, we'll get onto it straight away. They sent their, their main man, their surveyor, Archibald Smith through. They sent him ahead. He was the bloke who oversaw the construction of that line so far. He also oversaw construction of the Boon Boo line, the uh, Chiligo line, which goes Mariba through to Armadette and across Chiligo. He was too IC and overseeing construction at Northern Accord line. So he's a bloke who had a lot of experience building railways in North Queensland. Now we had to survey the land and basically plot the path for the railway to be built on from Ivory across to Georgetown. This was going to prove a little bit problematic because the Newcastle range, the biggest range that he'd ever encountered, was directly in between Hinesley and Georgetown. As most of you know, trying to build a railway up a steep incline is impossible. The train won't get up. But he put his surveying hat on and he got out. And he found a path, and that's, that's exactly what we're on at the moment. So they started construction of the line. And they weren't too far out of where Forsyth is now. They weren't too far away. When the government decided to send up a couple of officials to have a look at the project, to see how it was all coming along, and report back to them. And when these guys came up here, they were absolutely bloody flabbergasted with what Archibald Smith threw had done. Now, typical government bloody bureaucrats, sitting in an office down south somewhere, as far as I'm concerned, he should go to Ainsley, uh, from Ainsley to Georgetown in a straight line. Straight line, quickest way between two points, saves money, should do that. And they were really angry at him because he'd gone like southwest from Ironsley and he'd come all the way down to where we're headed, Forsyth, and his plan was to go back up from Forsyth to Georgetown from there. And he tried to talk these fellas around and say, look, there's nothing else I could do, that range is way too steep and this is the only way it was going to work. And they said, rubbish, you have wasted the government's time, you've wasted government money, or oh, we're going to see you in court, buddy. You're never going to work in this country again. Oh. 
and off they went. Now an inquest into the whole project was launched. These things don't happen overnight. So this all kicked off in sort of the later part of 1910. As it was all happening, tension started to rise and before you know it, World War I broke out. At that point, this wasn't a priority. No one was thinking about finishing off this whole investigation into how this potentially could have been done more efficiently. Once the war was over, depression set in, mineral prices plummeted, so mines shut down, and the whole project was just forgotten about, never thought about again. So that's why still to this day there's a gap between Forsyth and Croydon. about, you know, steep going up and over a range and too steep a train can't do it. It's exactly why the cattle yards are there. From Forsyth, bringing a full length train with cattle out of Forsyth at this point was impossible. The train couldn't do it. So they got the cattle yards here. There were two things they used to do. They either brought half the train up, um, stowed it in that little siding there and then sent back all the way to Forsyth, get the other half, bring it up, put it all together here and then take off. Or they'd actually muster the cattle up the road from Forsyth, get it to this point, lock all the cattle up in the yards, and when the train got here empty, it would then load all the cattle from this point. Thank you. 